Hola, and welcome to Spanish Answers, a podcast that gives you unas y avitas claves as you unlock your Spanish language adventure. I'm your host, Sarah, with Language Answers, and today in episode 58, we'll be taking a break from our normal routine to discuss our second special of 2021, Chile's Fiestas Patrias. Now, I wanted to talk about this one in today's episode because it's an important holiday that is just about to be celebrated in Chile. We'll focus on Fiestas Patrias, which is also known as El Dieciocho, because it is celebrated on September 18th. So, I hope you enjoy this episode, and even try a few traditional Chilean recipes to celebrate the day, no matter where you are. So, let's get started! To start with, what is Fiestas Patrias? Literally, Fiestas Patrias means patriotic parties. This celebration of Chile's independence, culture, and country officially lasts for two days, September 18th through September 19th, although the actual celebration lasts about a week. In order to fully understand Fiestas Patrias, though, we need to understand a little bit about Chile's history. Back in 1808, King Fernando VII of Spain was deposed by the French and replaced with Joseph Bonaparte, Napoleon Bonaparte's older brother. But the Latin American colonies were not willing to go along with this. Thus, on September 18th in 1810, about 500 people in Santiago got together for a Cabildo Abierto, or an open town meeting, where they accepted the resignation of the corrupt Chilean governor, Francisco Antonio Garcia Carrasco, and then formed a Junto de Gobierno, which is a military government, under the leadership of the interim governor, Mateo de Toro y Zambrano, who also happened to be in his 80s. The junta pledged loyalty to King Fernando VII, just as the junta in Buenos Aires, Argentina did. And interestingly though, this wasn't the date of Chile declaring its independence from Spain, but rather the beginning of their journey to independence. For example, the following year, Chile created a national congress called Congreso Nacional. Then, in May of 1814, so less than two years later, when King Fernando VII regained his throne and ended the war with France, he began trying to retake control of the Spanish colonies. He succeeded somewhat by winning the Battle of Rancagua on October 2nd, 1814, which is sometimes called the end of the Patria Vieja, or Old Country. Many patriot leaders left for Argentina, including one Bernardo O'Higgins. On July 9th, 1816, more than two years later, Argentina declared its own independence, and in January of 1817, General José de San Martín of Argentina crossed the Andes with his army, including with O'Higgins, to free Chile and Peru. They defeated the royalists on February 12, 1817, at Chacabuco Hill, and O'Higgins was declared the supreme director of Chile. Then, one year later, on February 12, 1818, Chile finally declared its independence. Yet it wasn't until the Battle of Maipú on April 5, 1818, that the war for independence was finally won for Argentina, Peru, and Chile. Whew, there. Now that we've got the history kind of summarized and packaged for us, let's go on to how do they celebrate Fiestas Patrias. So there are parades and rodeos that highlight the traditional Chilean cowboy, or huaso, the rodeo has been Chile's national sport, actually, since 1962. It is a little different than what you would expect here in the U.S. For example, a team of two huasos ride horses, colleras, around the arena while trying to properly steer a calf. There are also many ramadas, which are temporary buildings with a dance floor, tables for eating, and music. There are also many fondas, which are stands that sell different foods and drinks. And don't forget the street performers, called chinchineros, who play with a bass drum on their back and use their feet via a rope to play cymbals on top of the drum. It's pretty cool. Now, during Fiestas Patrias, many people wear traditional dress. So the girls have these beautiful dresses with rows of frills on a wide skirt that comes down to just above the knee with a cinched waist, and the boys wear a poncho and a sombrero. And on the blog, I've included a photo. It's an image of a youth dance group from Santiago by Leonard G. And I've used that as the actual photo for the blog. If you want to check out their traditional dress, as well as any of the other videos that I've included in the blog, 
feel free to check that out. I will, of course, include a link to that, as well as all of my resources for this episode in the episode show notes. Anyways, there is a clip of the activities, the fiestas patrias in Chile, that will give you just kind of an idea of the different going-ons during the celebrations. Now, another note, on September 19th, this is called Dia de las Glorias del Ejército, or Day of the Glories of the Chilean Army. And they have the Great Military Parade of Chile in Santiago's O'Higgins Park, which you now understand who he is, and it's led by the Chilean Armed Forces. On this day, Chileans remember and honor those who have fought to protect their country. Interestingly, there is an official holiday known as Navy Day, or Dia de las Glorias Navales, which happens on May 21st, and this commemorates the bravery of Captain Arturo Pat in the Battle of Iquique, and again, I apologize if I am butchering any of these names, Iquique, on May 21st in 1879. Now, of course, as with any celebration, food is key. There are many asados, or barbecues, and tons of food, seriously. The theme seems to be eating way too much food. So here are some of the foods Chileans are very much enjoying on this day. Empanada de piño. It's an empanada, which, let's face it, empanadas are delicious, but it's an empanada filled with beef, onions, olives, hard-boiled eggs, and raisins. I know, weird combination, right? But piño comes from the Mapuche word piru regarding the beef and onion mixture. So I've made a version before that didn't have the hard-boiled eggs, but I would love to try this recipe by Marion Blazes from the Sprout Seeds. Of course, included the link, no worries. Note, there seem to be two main ways to fold the empanadas. Now, Marion's method makes the empanada look like a little packet, which is really cool. But for the other method, which gives the empanada a fancy twist to it, check out the video by El Pastificio de Nicola. Anyways, continuing on our list, there are anticuchos, and these are meat skewers. There's choripan, which is chorizo sandwiches. Then there's pastel de choclo. I know, I know, the name sounds like it would have chocolate in it, but alas, this is not the case. This is more of a corn pie thing. So yeah, to see what I can't really describe, check out the recipe at food.com. Or if you want a more reliably authentic recipe, check out the video by Alvaro Barrientos Montero. And it's a bonus because you get to use your Spanish, as it's completely in Spanish. Then there are sopaipillas, spelled S-O-P-A-I-P-I-L-L-A-S. These are fried Andean squash and flour. Basically, you could call them squash fritters. These are different from the sopapillas we are more familiar with in the U.S. For one thing, they're spelled differently, just slightly. But I found two recipes that I really want to try. One from allrecipes.com one of my go-to places when I need a quick recipe, and a food blog I just discovered, International Cuisine. There is a version of sopaipillas that is not savory, but sweet. They're called sopaipillas pasadas, and they're served with a sweet sauce. I've included a recipe that I found from Directo al Panador, and it looks delicious. Plus, it's in Spanish, so more practice for you. Yay! Anyways, if you try any of these recipes, please let me know how they turn out. I personally am going to print them out tonight, and I am very much looking forward to trying them out. Anyways, there are also, of course, popular drinks, such as melón con vino, chicha, or terremotos. Now, terremotos, these alcoholic drinks apparently pack quite a punch, hence their name, which means earthquake. Let's move on to the juegos, or the games. There are some cool games that people play during Fiestas Patrias, including kite flying, which is also known as volantín. Apparently, it used to be a thing to use thread with powdered glass called hilo curado to have kite battles, but this has since been made illegal due to injuries and accidents. Like, what? Anyway, here are a few other cool, typical games for Fiestas Patrias. There's trompo which is basically tops. You spin your top and try to get to spin the longest. You can also do battles where your top tries to hit another one. There's emboque, which is a toy that has a wooden hat-like thing attached to a stick via string. The goal is to toss the hat onto the stick with one hand. It's harder than it sounds. Reyuela, or tejo. This game is a little bit like horseshoe in the US. You throw discs from a distance onto a marked out area or box of dirt with a string through the center. 
You get two points if you hit the string, one if you're close, and zero for all other positions. There is palo encebado, where basically you grease a long wooden pole and people try to climb to the top, and persecución del chancho, where you grease a baby pig and let it loose in an enclosed area, letting a bunch of kids try to catch it. So if you want to see these in action, I have of course included Juegos Típicos, a video on YouTube that gives a brief snapshot of all of these and more in action. Now let's talk about the traditional dance of Chile, La Cueca. This was officially made the country's national dance in 1979. It is danced as a couple, with the man initially offering his arm to the woman and the two of them then walking around in a circle. After this, the real dancing begins. They each have their own handkerchief, or pañuelo, that they wave in different ways, including hitting the ground, and specific feet movements. Supposedly, the dance resembles the mating dance of a hen and a rooster. Personally, I can kind of see it, but only by stretching my imagination. So of course, I've included a link to a YouTube video that highlights a couple dancing La Cueca. And of course, if you would like to learn how to do this dance, I've included a link to a fun class by Claudia Miranda and Felipe Basaez. An interesting, more somber note, during the dictatorship by Augusto Pinochet, this dance was turned into a type of protest as people would dance La Cueca by themselves, highlighting their missing partner as one of the many who disappeared under his control. All right. To wrap up this episode, I've included a link to John Gross's video on typical games of Chile for Fiestas Patrias, but it's really more of a snapshot into what Fiestas Patrias looks like for school children in Chile. It gives a good glimpse into food, games, and so much more. But I do want to include a note on the video. In it, John mentioned that rodeos are illegal in the US. This isn't actually quite accurate. It's illegal in certain parts of the US, but there are many places where it is an important cultural tradition and continues to be celebrated today. So just wanted to make sure that you didn't get the wrong impression. Normally we would include a cultural tip, but since the whole episode is a cultural tip, we will forgo that for today. Next week we will continue with our normal routine in episode 59. So until then, I hope that you really enjoyed this episode and I hope you're able to incorporate some of the joy and creativity from Las Fiestas Patrias on September 18th. Hasta luego!